Hello students, welcome to the NIOS classroom. Today we will be learning about the international perspective on social science curriculum. I am Dr. V. Suprabha, Principal Vidya School. Now, what do you understand by the term international? As the term suggests, we are talking about not just the country where we live in, but we are also talking about all the other countries with whom we have relationships. Social science curriculum now takes a perspective or look at what do we do. Let us begin with this. You can see two images. We talk about Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam or the whole world is one. The image on the left of the screen is apt for that, where the people of the entire world are one and they are all interrelated, they are related to each other. Not one person on this earth can live or sustain alone. Our thoughts, the activities all match with each other. And on the right side of the screen, you see another image. Now, this image is about how globe has become one. There is so much of globalization that is happening all around. And what do we mean by globalization? So, globalization is when each and every country is connected to each other, not just by way of technology, but by way of trade, economy and knowledge as well. The world is now a small place. You can talk to people from anywhere to anywhere. You can reach one end of the, from one end of the world to the other end in a span of more than 22 hours or 24 hours. The whole world has now become a local. It is not any more global, but it is one village as we call it. Now look at this. There are some concerns and the concerns are the same across the world. What can you see are the concerns? Just list out a few concerns. The most important concern today that we are all battling with is the concern of global warming, the concern of pollution, the concern of desertification, the concern that we are letting go of all our resources, that is overutilization of the resources. We have not yet been able to tap new resources. Many buildings are coming up, creating a jungle of concrete. Unplanned development, unplanned constructions. If you look at the Mumbai floods, or you look at how a place fills with water with just a few inches of rain shows clearly the kind of work that we are doing. The concerns across the world remain the same. There are tsunamis which have increased. There are lot of fire, forest fire which is happening all across and the fire spreads too fast than we can even think. The number of tornadoes are increasing. The glaciers have melted away and we know that the glaciers of Antarctica are also melting quite fast. And imagine what would the result be? Once the glaciers are gone, the entire earth will be submerged in water. And then of course will be the ice age. So you see the concerns are the same. You can see the resources on the tree. That is a tree of resources. Various type of resources including people is being utilized. Overuse of technology, overuse of phone, sound, noise, waves is all impacting. Each one impacts us. Resources are depleting so fast that we really do not know whether the new generations to come will have enough of any of these resources. The petroleum coal resources are depleting, the minerals are depleting, the rocks are depleting, the rivers are overflowing, 
because they don't know where to flow. To the extent that the animals are now coming into the land where people live because we have encroached upon their area. The forests are being cut and the animals don't know where to go. So if you look at this, the entire world has the same problem. Now look at these images. There is terrorism and yet we need peace. When we talk about globalization, we talk about how to sort issues, how to stop terrorism, how to bring about equality, how to tackle the gender differences that we have, how can we actually deal with various aspects, various issues, various problems that are there in our society. These are the common natural disasters that you can see. There is drought, the nuclear bomb was dropped and still we have the fear of a nuclear attack. So, it will happen only once that all countries have now become nuclear superpowers and it could happen any time. We also have pests destroying the crops. We don't know where these crops are eaten up. We have caving of the landforms. We have dust storms all across the deserts which are covering everything. The water is polluted with all the plastics and all the unwanted material that we throw into the water. The land is degrading because we are not utilizing the land properly. The tsunamis, the volcano eruption, the earthquakes, all are common natural disasters that we all see. These are our modern age concerns. The first and foremost is human development. How do we develop the human beings? And the first thing towards that is providing them with good education. How do you get good education? Good education is available by having many schools and teachers who come and teach, who empower the children, empowering the downtrodden, empowering the women, empowering the people who are illiterate, who live in the corners of our country. Literacy is one most important aspect or one most important adage that can help in the human development. Then the community comes together. That, that's the only thing which will eradicate poverty. That's the only thing which will eradicate unemployment, which will make these citizens capable. They can handle anything that they want. And human beings are the biggest resource that the modern world has. You know that India and China are the world's largest economies having the maximum human population or human resource. Unless this resource is put to great use, it is not going to be of great use at all. It is being wasted right now. Now look at all the human rights, right to education, right to assembly, association, press, information, speech, religion, all these are part of our education. These things need to be taught to each and every child. Now, social science curriculum, what images you saw are all required in the social science curriculum today. Now, what is happening in the social science curriculum in other parts of the world? So, let us take the example of the South, South Africa, South Africa's UNESCO curriculum. Now, what is there in their curriculum? Can you see this image? This image talks about a green, clean environment, which is sustainable environment. If you look, there are trees, there are windmills, the nature is being utilized to provide for a very sustainable environment. So, the curriculum there talks about relationship between people and their environment. We live in an environment around us and we are the ones who create it as well. You can create a very happy, very clean, very hygienic environment or you can also have an environment which is not so good. You can litter around and that would cause a great damage, not just to the environment but to us as well. You know that malaria, 
dengue and many such diseases are on the rise. And you know why are they on the rise? Because the people are not taking care of the environment. And so, the curriculum in South Africa has brought that in. People understand that they need to take care of their environment. So, the students are taught from the lower age groups that how they need to take care of environment. The second thing which is there is the people's attitude, values and beliefs. Values and beliefs are created. They do not exist in zero or in vacuum. Now, to create the values and beliefs, you have to have the right attitude. So, people's attitude is very essential in creating the curriculum and what they study. And so, environmental education and human rights education are given a lot of emphasis in South Africa. It is a country which was plagued by wars, which has been a country where people have been taken for granted. We know that the British completely occupied and took away a lot of people as slaves, which has altered the attitude of people and that is where the human rights is so important, a part of education. People need to know what their rights are and are willing to get up and fight for their rights, at the same time not forgetting what their duties are. There is an emphasis on what the learners learn and the learners construct knowledge. As you can see, unless we question, unless the learners question, they do not learn much. What is it? Why is it? How is it? Who made it? When did it come into being? All these are questions that we need to ask. And as a teacher, it is our responsibility to ensure that our students remain inquisitive, they ask as many questions, because these questions are the ones which will help them learn more, increase their knowledge base and not just asking questions, but finding answers about those questions. In the curriculum of South Africa, we find that the questions are more related to the society and the environment in which they live. You should know about what is around you first, to be able to make use of it, the best judicious use and that is the way the society grows. So, asking questions and finding answers about the society the students live in is very essential and you can also see how they construct it is all experiential learning. The students are given material or they collect material and they create what they want. And that provides solution for them locally rather than depending on some superpower to give them solutions. And believe me, the local solutions are the ones which are best suited for the condition that we live in. Because we understand what we need. Now, what is achieved by this method of learning? Development of informed, critical and responsible citizens. Now, the citizens as they grow up, because these children of today are the citizens of tomorrow and they need to understand, be able to critically examine, that is where we said question and become responsible citizens who can take care of themselves and their surroundings. And these exercises which are conducted, activities which are performed by the students in classroom help them keep informed. We know that Africa is a country where in the south of Africa we have got ocean. So, people, the children have to know the oceans are pirates, how to deal with them. It is hot, closer to the equator, it is really, really hot. So, we need to know how to tackle heat, right? A lot of forests, what to do with the forests, how to let them grow more. The students also learn to adapt themselves and live according to the cultural diversity of the changing society. It is not just that they live in the primitive age, they are changing, they are changing, the society is moving and they are also adapting themselves to the technology that is available for them. 
By doing this, the learners are equipped to contribute to the development of the society. Because now the students know what their needs of the society are and how can they bring in the newness in technology, the modernity into their lives. So, the aim of the curriculum is to develop awareness of their own country's future. What do they see South Africa in the say the next 10 years? Where they are going to take it? And is a young who can actually take the country to the next level? Another aim is to visualize the economic and social challenges including racism and sexism. We all know across the world we are fighting the issue of race and sex. There is completely skewed relationship. There are a lot of racist comments. The skin tone is taken into consideration. The way you look is taken into consideration. The height is looked into consideration. All these create racist comments. And the curriculum is actually straight addressing these issues which are on the ground faced by them rather than studying something which is unrelated. The aim is also to build a non-racial generation in the present and the future. The present generation will be the future of any nation and hence the present generation needs to be taught what they really are going to use in the future and who they are going to become in the future. The learners explore various issues, race, gender, class, genocide, which is very common in many parts of Africa. And the impact of all that the past has had. So, the impact of what the past did and what the present is creating so that they can create a new future. So, they learn from their past and create a future. What the curriculum look like? The curriculum develops inquiry and investigation because when you question, you are basically investigation. When you question, you are basically inquiring into what is and what is not. What can be better? How can it be improved upon? The curriculum also looks into the past and the present in history of the place. In geography, the relationships are between the people and their environment and the resources. We know that people, environment and resources are all interrelated to each other. To study, to learn about those interrelationships would pave a way for a better tomorrow. So, learning about the interrelationships is very essential. Different skills like how historical interpretations can be done. New skills to interpret are being developed. Developmental issues on the local level, national level and global level are critically analyzed. So, the student knows what are the issues at the local level and they work towards sorting out those issues. They also learn about their national issues and the global issues so that they can be developed to handle those issues as well as they grow up. Education is value based. So, the values are never compromised. The values are kept intact. In fact, the South African curriculum is has, having a lot of emphasis on having value systems in this country, in their people. The constitution, the human rights and the environmental issues are very many key areas of the curriculum. Now, these areas and these issues need to be learnt by the students. Just imagine how easy it would be for the students to actually work on creating a sustainable space, the school they are in or the workplace that they go to and create something new. New crops can be grown if they know what the geography of the place is like, what the temperature and climatic conditions are going to be. The children can develop new ideas to grow new crops. Similarly, when they know their history, what happened and why did they fall prey to another country who governed them, 
they can work upon it and ensure that that is not repeated now. The skills are acquired in this world. The students need the skills for having communication, the skills to be able to put across what their thoughts are, the skills of technology, all those skills actually integrated into their curriculum helps them to grow. Local issues of South Africa are very many. The people there are fighting diseases. Many waterborne diseases are completely prevailing there and the students need to learn how to tackle those waterborne diseases. And students are the ones who can actually pass on information, share information with adults and make the adults understand the need for sorting this. Similarly, nation as a whole, what is it dealing with? What are the policies? What would the government want them to do? How can they get better education, higher education, which countries they can visit? All these information is very, very essential. And so, these are all imparted in the classroom. The civics or the social science, social curriculum, political life is all made to understand for the children. Because these students who live in that area need to work on these. Values hold a very important place in any society and that goes to South Africa as well. And UNESCO curriculum has laid a great emphasis on values. The constitution was newly created and written. As you all know, South Africa got their independence from the Britain much later than India did. And once they were independent, there were a number of civil wars within the country. Now, to understand why such civil wars happened, what was the result of those civil wars will actually show the students what new can they create and what they should not be doing. The constitution lays down the principles by which the country is being run or they know what are their rights and what are their duties, what they need to do, what they can do, what they cannot do. Similarly, human rights violations have been many in South Africa. Like we spoke about the sexist comments and the racism which is rampant all over, the Human Rights Commission is very active in South Africa. The people of South Africa need to learn more about their human rights, to voice what is theirs and to get what is theirs. And that's the reason why human rights has a very, very important space, place in the curriculum of South Africa. South Africa has vast forests, grasslands, where animals live freely. The environmental issues are very important. And the students need to understand these environmental issues so they can preserve the environment. The environment of South Africa invites number of tourists to come and visit the country, which actually boosts their economy because that gives them money. And so, taking care of the environment is important. And when and how can they take care of the environment? Only when they know about it and the issues that are related to that. And that is the key to the development of South Africa. So today in this topic, we saw how UNESCO has created the curriculum, which is very humane, which is very close to the human beings and their attitudes, their psychology, their sociology, their thoughts, what is integral to their country, to their space is what is created in the curriculum. The students learning this curriculum will naturally and automatically take to knowing their local areas much better and creating sustainability for their local area.